Hey friends, it's Laura. This is a little bit different of a tutorial that I'm doing for you today. Um, it's actually a compilation of several videos I took over a matter of about a two week span, and they're all revolved around making the Crown Royal quilt. So it's a kind of a great project. I did this for one of my friends and it was super fun to gift to him. And without further ado, let's just get started. friends gave me a ton of crown royal bags and he's been wanting to put them into a quilt for a while um, and I've actually been after him and I'm like hey you know let me know what you want what let me know what your style is how big etc etc and he's given me pretty much uh, nothing Archie um, so but today I figured out what I'm gonna do and I'm going to turn all of his crown royal bags into a chandelier quilt so I need um, 41 of the five inch squares and then 84 of the two and a half inch squares from the bags. So I thought I'd show you how I'm going to um, prep these and we will put this together into a video so you can see the whole quilt. We need to do a little bag prep before we cut our blocks. So what I have done is I've just kind of grabbed a couple of the bags out of the pack that uh, my friend gave me and we are working with these crown royal bags and we're not really sure what the fabric is so i do have my my um, iron set at the highest temperature like cotton because there's a lot of wrinkles in this but what i've experienced is that some of the bags um don't like the iron and some of them do and I think it's because some of them the thread is actually kind of like a synthetic or a plastic type thread and others is not um, and my guess is the newer bags are probably cheaply made compared to some of his older ones um, I have not tested these these so we will work through the issues together right here and now so my iron is hot I think yes it is hot um, and we're just gonna press and see what happens. So really, we just wanna try to get all the wrinkles out. This is not gonna be flat. Ooh, yay, this one actually is fine with the iron. So that's good. That would've been a little bit embarrassing. That's okay, right? We're in this together. Okay, so yeah, this one is ironing pretty good. And like I said, this is not gonna be perfectly flat. I, I'm really just going to try to get this area right around the logo really good and pressed and flat. Um, and then these bags are thick enough that you do want to turn them over and do both sides. So we can, um, you can add a little starch to this if you want. If you do, I would use something that is not gonna leave any white residue. Um, so maybe like a, a best press item or, um, yeah, I would just go with best press, honestly. <laughs> I would just do best press on this. Um, yeah, so now our bag is pretty flat and it's definitely less wrinkly and we'll be able to cut it. The first thing I discovered when kitting his um, Crown Royal bags together is that they're not all made out of the same fabric. I did not know that. But you will have some bags that are kind of like a felt material and you'll also have some bags that are more of a... I don't even know what this is, like a, a cloth of some sort. This is kind of like a canvas, the camo ones. Um, this one again is kind of a felt. And then some of them are like a fleece feeling. So you're gonna have varying types of material. And so putting all of those different types of materials into one quilt can be tricky if you don't think through what you're gonna be doing. Um, the other thing that I decided when doing the chandelier quilt is that I need to cut these on point. And, um, you know, if you've never fussy cut before, then let me show you how to do that. Let's get started. All right, so one thing I didn't mention is that these bags come in different sizes. Um, depending on the size of bottle <laughs> that you buy, depends on the size of bag that you get. So, um, you know, you can tell that there's a difference in size in these two bags. So how do you kind of work all that in and think through how to get all of those incorporated into one quilt? Um, but if you look, these, the logo is the same size. Just because the bag is a different size, the logo is the same. Now, a few of the special bags, um, the logo may be a little bigger on those. 
All right, so, so this is kind of like the standard size bag that I have here in front of me. And what I'm doing is I am just using my five inch square ruler and I am cutting this on the diagonal, on point basically, um, because this fabric is kind of like a, a fleece. So it doesn't really, it doesn't matter which way I cut this really. Um, it's not quilting cotton there, you know, it's gonna be stretching no matter what I do basically. So what I have discovered is that with a five inch ruler, if I line that center mark, that 45 up on the R and I put that 45 degree angle line right across that logo, then you can get a nice five inch square. Now, you'll also notice that this is hanging off down here, right? That's, that's kind of a problem because that means it's not um, big enough to cut into a five inch square just the way it lays. So what I'm gonna do is get that 45 right on the R, as I mentioned before, use my rotary cutter. And okay, I have seen a lot of people make make um, quilts with these bags and they use every single piece of the bag. That is not my goal here. I have about 60 bags um, and he wants a wall hanging. So I am not going to worry about saving and using every little scrap of fabric. Um, I am gonna be putting some quilting cotton with it. So um, anyway, just, just keep that in mind when you're looking at how I'm cutting my stuff because I am not concerned about um, conserving fabric, I guess, that's what I would say. All right, so I just moved that up a little bit and it is still attached at the bottom. It won't be for long. <laughs> and line that back up with your ruler. Again, like I said, this fabric, it um, really stretches and moves. So I just cut that bottom, that very tippy tippy top bottom of the bag off. I'm gonna stand up guys, just so I can see better. <laughs> and cut my other two sides. All right, so now I should have a nice five inch square out of my, round, my Crown Royal bag. And it has a little bit of the gold stitching, which will show in my quilt and I want that. So I'm very happy with that result. Now with the other piece that came from the back, I need, I also need two, um, two and a half inch squares. So this is five inches. And I'm just going to cut this into the two and a half inch squares that I need. And this is what I'm using from the bag. Now, okay, so there's, a lot of fabric left over so if I did want to do something with that then I could but I'm not too worried about that at this point in time so um, I'm going to continue cutting all my bags and then I will talk to you about assembly. So we have pressed, we have cut, we have prepped right so it's time to sew some blocks together. You're also going to need a few other pieces for your blocks so make sure you check out the um, pattern for the chandelier quilt so you know what other sizes to cut. So I'm gonna use my design board and I'm gonna lay out my block. And the reason we do this is because, remember I cut several of those bags on point. And if we don't sew them together right, well, our logo could be upside down and that would be kind of a bummer. Or even worse, it could be sideways or who knows what. So it is important to make sure we have our colored squares on the top and the bottom of the block. And then we also have our logo pointed the right way. So I have um, a couple different blocks, and to be quite honest with you, I've done several of these blocks already, so I don't have that many left to go, but you'll get the idea with what I'm gonna show you right now. So our block, when it's in the quilt, will actually be on point. So my design board, when I'm laying my block out, I can also put it on point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my five inch block right in the middle, and I'm gonna position it the way I want it to look in the block, right? All right, and then that block gets, that piece gets two additional pieces on each side of it. And then this is why it's important to make sure you lay out your blocks and think through how this is gonna look in your quilt. 
you want one of your colored squares up on top and one of your colored squares at the bottom. So then our logo is going the right way. If I wasn't paying attention to this and I just sewed my pieces together and these were over here, then it would go on my quilt like this. And that's not exactly what we're going for, right? No. So let's make sure we lay this out. Here's that one and here's this one. And then we have two more rectangles. I love these new design boards, by the way. Um, if you haven't seen my design board tutorial, make sure you check that out. There will be a link in the description box and I'll probably pin a comment down below as well. So here's what my block is gonna look like when it's done. So let's get sewing. I have my design board sitting off to the side, but I'm gonna keep it sitting there so things aren't in my way. And then I can just grab two pieces and I know which way they're gonna go. Put them together and here we're gonna go sewing. I'm gonna be quiet just to get these pieces put together. Okay, so one thing I will mention, the seams on these bags, sometimes they like to fold one way or the other. I've been kind of trying to let them fold the way they want to fold just because I feel like then they won't fight me when I go to quilt it. Um, but you want to pay attention to which way they're folding, especially if it's going to go across two seams because you don't want it to like get in a twist. All right, so pay attention to those seams if you have those uh, and it's very possible that you don't have those. I just cut my bags purposefully just to get some of that detail. Now I'm going to use my design board once more to make sure that I have my block laid out the way it should be. This is the way it will look in the quilt so I know that I have my pieces laid out correctly and I can sew those two seams together to complete my block. Okay, so this is where we're gonna get real. You can see that this comes together really well, this not so much. So obviously my quilt pieces were not cut quite right and <laughs> these bags stretch a lot. So I'm gonna like finagle this seam a little bit before I put this finished block into the quilt, but this is basically what you're going for. Just remember that you wanna lay out your quilt pieces and you want to um, make sure your logo is going the right way and remember that your blocks are all on point. Now I'm gonna show you what I've done so far and then the next step that I will show you is just laying out the special blocks into the quilt design. All right, so I have, um, I think 37 of the 41 blocks done. Um, and I do have some specials there on the left. They're not dispersed within the quilt. Once I actually get all the blocks done, I'll play with them with placement and get them spread out throughout the quilt so it gives it more balance. Um, and then I will be back here to show you, kind of give you some tips and tricks on that as well. Okay, so now it's time to lay out our quilt. And we have 41 blocks to work with. Um, of those 41 blocks, I know that I have around, well, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 specials that aren't the um, on-point logos like I was showing earlier. And, or they're like a special color or a special bag or something about them is special. So we wanna to try to evenly disperse them in the quilt, but yet bring some uniformity together in the design. So the couple of choices that I've made for right now, I may change my mind, is that I want just the plain on point blocks with the logo on the outer edge all the way around the quilt. So that's what I started with. And then in addition to that, from this point into making a swoop down, those are the ones that I had to cut 
not on point, but um, regular. So these logos are at a slant. And I chose to do those because these blocks, um, there were uh, 10 of them, I think, nine, eight, sorry. There were eight of them. I had two too many blocks sewn up. So I have three here and three there. And I reversed the way the logo was going just to add a little interest. And it brings your eye from the top all the way to the bottom of the quilt. After a few different layouts that I did, this is the layout that I decided upon. And I started stitching some of the rows together. And then I thought, oh, I should show that step. So I am angly challenged. Anytime I have things that are like moving, um, and anytime I do blocks on point, and there's a certain direction that they need to go, I can get confused so quickly and so easily. So what I do is I stack one row at a time. And to be quite honest with you, I'll take a picture of the quilt first, the way it's laid out, and then I'll stack my row and I'll reference that as I'm going along. But let me show you how I'm gonna do this next row. Now you're gonna notice that my um, setting triangles are not in this row and that's okay. They're over on my design board waiting to be attached. So what I'm going to do for this next row that I'm quilt that I'm going to be sewing together, I'm just going to start here and stack them one on top of the other. And I'm going to take this stack just like this over to my sewing table and I will sew them together two at a time. So let's head over there. Okay, so we have all of our blocks from our design wall and I have them laid out. And I know that this block is the, the bottom left of that row. So I'm gonna leave them right here beside my sewing machine and I'm just going to take them and put them like they would look in the row. So I'll flip these two together and I'll sew them together. And I'll keep going down up this row until I get all the blocks sewn, get those assembled together and then um, I'll tell you how to do the setting triangles. Okay, so I keep my blocks in order, chain piece, so I know that this was the first two I sewed, so this is the first two blocks in a row, this is the third and the fourth, so I'm just going to flip those on top of one another and we'll keep going. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for our setting triangles. And I know I need one on the side and one on the top. So this is the bottom of my row. So this setting triangle will go in just like this. So I know when I look at this, it's going to look like this. So I flip that over. And the setting triangles are kind of nice. I do cut mine a little bigger just so I can trim them down and have a little wiggle room. Um, but that corner of your triangle is going to line right up on the corner of your block. So we'll sew this setting triangle and then we'll do the top and then we'll try it on the wall. Okay, so the one for the top of the quilt, it's pointed like this. So same setting triangle is going to go like this. This is when having pictures of your quilt and that design wall really comes in handy because it helps me to visualize um, which way those triangles are going. All right, so thankfully we are correct with this one. Here is our row. No, I did not press it. I did not press this row yet and I won't until I'm ready to assemble it. Um, I like to make sure that all my angles are right and to make sure all of my seams are lined up correctly. Everything looks good before I get with that press because if I press it, and then I'm like, oh man, I sewed this block in upside down. Then not only do I have to rip out a seam, but I also have to deal with that pressed edge that's really, you know, sharp and flat. So I like to kind of try it first, make sure I'm right, and then we'll press it. So I'm going to continue sewing my rows together. When I get down to this bottom corner, I'll show you some tricks on putting those triangles together too, just for a nice clean um, corner. It's going to be the same as what the top left corner is. So 
it's kind of it's a little bit of a different technique but it's simple and you can handle it hey guys so i just recorded this corner for you at least i thought i was recording i was not recording i just took a picture all right so let me explain what i did since it didn't record and i don't want to take those seams out um basically i use my design board to lay this block out so i put this in here i put my my um, corner setting triangle and my two side setting triangles, and I lay them on the board. I start with my bottom corner setting triangle, take my fingernail, fold it in half, press it a little bit, same thing with the block, match those lines up, and sew this triangle on first. Then I, since I'm so angly challenged, I put this back, the middle block and this triangle back on the design board, and then these two triangles are still in place, so I can flip one over, sew it on, flip this, put it back on the board, flip this over, sew it on, and I'm good to go with that lower corner of the quilt. I'm so sorry that didn't record, but I don't want to take these apart and show it again. Okay, so now I have all of my rows sewn together, and it's time to start assembling it into a quilt top. Um, I do have these two rows up here sewn together already, which I did way back when, just to make sure that I was doing this right. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one row at a time. So I'm going to take one this, this piece and the next row off my design wall. I'll flip them over, match up these seams that will be nesting, and sew that seam. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll take the next row and sew it. Now when I'm to this point, I will also start sewing from this corner in. So I'll have two halves of my quilt to join one long one long seam rather than trying to keep growing and growing and growing as I go along. Hopefully that makes sense. And it makes sense when we start sewing. So let's grab this first section here and I'm going to go ahead and flip it over onto the row I'm taking down just so like again, <laughs> because again, I'm, I'm angry challenged. So I'm going to make sure that I have these right, the top, right, the bottom, right, all that good stuff. And I'm going to take this to my sewing table and sew this seam. So here we are at the sewing table, and what we're going to do is kind of pin the junctures of these blocks. So you, um, when you're putting this quilt together, you'll start to notice that the colored squares will begin to nest. So what I'm going to do is just go down this row and pin where all of those um, corner squares are lining up, just so I know that I don't get off. Um, if you happen to start having issues with that, then your chandelier effect is not going to work very well on your quilt. So that's the only, I mean, I don't pen very much. Um, to be quite honest, there are times I'll, that I have done this quilt that I haven't penned at all. Um, but it definitely, you get, a, you get a better result if you do, at least pen a little bit. So again, what I'm going to do is just go down this row and pin just at the junctures where those colored blocks match up and then we'll sew it together. The other nice thing about doing the pinning down the row is that when you get to the point where you're starting to sew, you can kind of use that pin to kind of give it a tug and get everything lined up. So pins do come in handy. All right, so let's sew down this row. Okay, so normally I would go ahead and just grab my next row and sew it on here, but I want you guys to be able to see the progress we're making. So let me get this back up on the design wall so you can see where we're at, and then we'll kind of talk through our halfway point on the quilt and how we're gonna handle that. Okay, so we are basically halfway um, with that last row that I put on. This row is our center row, so I will probably go ahead and attach it to this half 
But then once I get that piece attached, I'll start putting these last four rows together and then I'll have a four row piece to attach to my five row piece and we'll have the whole quilt top together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because there's really not much more to explain about that. You're basically just adding your rows, nesting your seams for your um, colored blocks and sewing each row together and letting the quilt grow. Um, it, it is a little different just because it's on point, but it's not, um, it's not difficult because you're, you're still just making a straight line. It's just that your um, quilt piece is at a diagonal. All of the rows have been sewn together. So now I have my center of my quilt top. I have decided this is where the pattern ends. Um, and this is approximately 60 inches square. I've decided that I want to add another two inch border all the way around it, just so when I'm quilting it, um, I have a nice sturdy edge to um, tie down onto the quilting machine because you do have a lot of seams here on the edges all the way around where the setting triangles are at. So I just want to clean that up and have a nice sturdy edge all the way around the quilt just to give a little extra stability for when I'm quilting it. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips and I'm going to sew borders all the way around it and then we'll be ready for quilting. Thanks to my amazing brother, I was able to get the Crown Royal quilt quilted and gifted to my friend. I'm gonna put some pictures in here so you can see the final result. Basically what I did was just an edge to edge, um, simple stitching, and I, I say it's edge to edge, but it was really custom stitching that I did myself, um, kind of free motion on a long room quilting machine. And I kind of mimicked the chandelier look um, just in the negative space. I did not stitch over any of the bags just because I was afraid to hit those seams. And the material, since it was so many different types of material, I didn't want to, um, to risk it puckering or tearing or just folding on me. Um, so I did stay just in the quilting cotton and it was perfectly fine to quilt it that way because as long, it was like a five inch square. So I had a four and a half inch finished square. Um, so those were perfectly fine to just stay uh, unquilted in the quilt and so I gifted it to my friend actually earlier today and he is super excited and can't wait to show to a couple of his other friends who apparently are getting crown royal quilts made by um, other people so this was such a great project I hope that you learned some tricks and tips along the way I hope you enjoyed seeing the final result of the crown royal quilt and I you know I really enjoyed doing the tutorial Please leave me a comment down below uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see in the future. If there's anything else that you would like to see me demonstrate, um, put that down there too. And like I said at the very beginning, I'll put a link to the pattern in the description box. And it is a free pattern from Lola Boutique. So feel free to check that out, obviously, and then you'll get your measurements and all of that good stuff. And thanks so much for joining me. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you next time. Happy stitching!